Hello and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what? I saw Hello and welcome back to Dialies for Shoe Clicks. Today we got a great video. We're talking about all the Silver Age figures that you need to be aware of when you go to your very first Silver Age tournament. Or even if it's not your first, and maybe you've played a little bit of Silver before. Silver's really old, from 2016 to, you know, 2020, somewhere around there. And there's a lot of really good Silver Age stuff that you need to be aware of to go when you're gonna play in a Silver Age tournament. So we have a bit of a list prepared for Silver Age stuff. First up is more so ideas, kind of, Things to prepare for, things to prepare for that, that, you, know, that are, you expect to see that aren't like necessarily specific, specific figures. Yeah, you know? I think before we get into silver specific figures, we should also mention everything that's modern is oh, also legal in silver. This so is true. Anything that you see in modern, making like the top cut in different tournaments and stuff, you'll probably also see some of that in silver. But that's not what we're focusing on. That's just keep that in mind. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. That all is also used. If it's good in modern, more than likely it's good in silver, unless there's like some crazy silver bullet to it yeah. in yeah. silver that's only available in silver. But I think that's very rare. You know, a lot of people refer to silver as modern with a dash of silver. I think that you can do more in silver than that. Yeah. But uh, there is a lot of like low point utility figures, low point uh, like retaliation. And we'll just get into that. We'll start off with retaliation. This has been one of the strongest powers since its release in Hero Clicks. Uh, an example right there of Dark Phoenix and a Meridroid without an A on his head. Yeah, no. he was misprinted. He was misprinted. <laughs> I thought they were all like that, but no. it's just that one apparently. Yeah, Rob, anyway, just yours of A. But yep. yeah, retail. <laughs> you don't know what it does. Um, if you've been attacked or damaged since your last turn, you essentially get to place one of these big guys next to an opposing character and then hit him really hard. And these guys are usually ten to thirty points. Real nasty, and there's so many of them. Some highlight ones from there are Surtur from the Mighty Thor. Mangog, also from the Mighty Thor. Tri Sentinel, who, gosh, he's just ridiculous. Insane. He was a what a he wasn't a convention exclusive. He was a prize kid. He was a prize kid figure. Yeah, yeah. for the days future past. Uh, Dark Phoenix, the uh, the giant girls from Avengers Infinity, which is uh, the Fast Forces one and the main set one, and then the Flora Colossa from uh, the Mighty Thor as well. Yep. And so also that uh, that big red guy we gave away is from the Mighty Thor. Oh, Carnage! Right. Yes, yeah. you, you play in the new one over the. Old you can one. play both. There's a Silver, case. Though. There's, There's a, a case legacy card version, version both, that's and true. the old one. That's the only difference. The real big difference is one heals and one spawns a bystander when he yeah. hits. So, yeah. and so with retail, you know, we're not going to dive into what specifically all of these do. I think some of them you build around more so than others, but for the most part. This is a mechanic to look out for specifically, where it's like, if I am in a situation with a team that I built for silver, how does it deal with retaliation? Can it deal with retaliation? If the answer is no, you may want to think about how you can adapt your team to do so, because if you're not, I mean, take a look at Dark Phoenix's retail ability where she just gets to do two pen to everything she hits within three, and she heals for each KO and hands out action tokens. If your team isn't ready for that, that could be the game. That's that's could be game over for that game. easy. Yeah. So I know I've had several experiences like man God, you can wipe out your entire yeah. team if you're Oof. not ready for that. Yeah. Four damage, three damage, mm -hmm. something like that. It's like it's insane. And another thing to note with retaliation is that it can actually trigger off of mystics as well. So if you were to attack a character with mystics, or your opponent attacks you with mystics, you know whatever it is, uh, you damage them so they can trigger their retail off of that. Yeah. So that's another thing to be mindful of. Retaliation is very scary. It's here to stay in silver, and uh, yeah. I mean, just check out the characters with retaliation powers, <laughs> and you'll see for yourself. They're they're very hard to uh, not pay the points for. They're very 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 useful. Their point. The only, absolutely. The only real way to deal with them is to be able to cross the map and kill them before they can retaliate against you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, luckily on smaller maps, that's a lot easier, and most of them happen to be colossal, so they're yeah. real easy to see. But uh, on an indoor closed off map with like a big distance that you have to close. Um, I mean, that's what won 2018 Worlds, so yeah, pretty true. much was a Restricted maps with a lot of retails, and basically, maybe you can kill a couple, but you can't kill them all. And, yeah, they just hit like trucks, so... They do. Be on the lookout for those. Maybe include some in your builds. All right. Next up, we have equipment. 
Uh, if you play modern, you know equipment is huge. You basically can't play modern without equipment. It's the exact same in silver, and silver gives you even more resources to actually use. So biggest thing is the mandarin rings, like what Ian's rocking right now, especially since you can start the game with two equipped yeah. by paying their point cost now, thanks to that recent rules change. So, <laughs> so a mandarin is only five points. So for 10 points, getting two of these on one figure is really, really strong. I urge you to go look and see what all the mansion rings do. They're almost necessary to own a set if you plan on playing a lot of silver. Uh, I would say so. I'd also say check out the ABPI set, so Black Panther and the Illuminati. All of the gems in that set are also very strong. That's definitely a big one is Power Gem, give you the plus yes. one to damage. RCE and CCE is really good, but Reality, Time, and a lot of other gems are also really good in that set, and those should be on your radar as well. What else do we have in there? Oh yeah, so Blood Axe is amazing from the Mighty Thor. I would definitely think about picking that one up. Same thing with Mjolnir from the Mighty Thor. Also very, very strong. The Octopus Arms from Earth X, giving you flurry, giant reach, and even improved movement. Also very, very strong. It's the only object in the game that gives you straight up flurry, make two attacks. It's, it's crazy. Know? So it's yeah. crazy good. Uh, the Venom Pump is great way to give a single person plus one stats and Battle Fury for a turn, or even to activate them if you want to take that damage at the end of your turn. So there's a ton of good objects. Those are just some highlights for you right there, but I would strongly urge you to look at all of them and also look compared to some modern objects and see what you really want to run. Oh, how can I forget? Sorry, Exospecs. Exospecs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight oh up, <laughs> choose an attack power or choose a speed power. Yeah. They are a weird point costed object. They're 12 points, which is really funny. So it's going to make your build a little wonky. One of the only objects that has built in restriction. You have also to be true. 30 points or more. Or I think it's either 30 points or more, or like 31 it's, or more. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but yeah, That's you can't right. just equip it to anyone. So it's one of the yeah, only objects. Yeah, if you wanted to put it on your, your thug from. Superior Frozen and Spider Man. Yeah. He's only 10 points. So. I cheated accidentally one time and put it on a big Tony. Oh no! <laughs> no! But yeah, I mean, their biggest weakness is gone. You can't destroy the Exospecs anymore. Yeah. yeah. It just starts equipped, so that's a huge buff for it. But I think the, the start for silver equipment is easily the Mandarin Rings. Yeah. They, yeah. they do so much. I think so. You got access to like 10 range mind control Bravo with Perplex. Some of the Plex, best yeah. powers that yeah. you can get, yeah. and then they're not just. Like standard powers, they're also like shape change, poison, better versions of powers. Straight up, yeah. Knockback, precision strike, Stealth, penetrating plus energy, free explosion. smoke cloud, like you name it. Yeah. yeah, free smoke cloud. Oh my gosh, free barrier. Yeah, yeah. The so, dumb. for I mean, and then yeah, like every ten point object you think about equipping to a character, compare it to two mandarin rings. The mandarin rings are an absolute must in silver. I think that's the biggest takeaway for objects. But I think the top three you're looking at are what power gem, arc power arms, arc arms, exospecs. Yeah. Probably those three. I agree. Giving yeah. flurry. <laughs> it's just it's so much. We are yeah. Uh, so you want to talk about troublemakers and trouble alerts? Yeah. So these little guys they came out in the Batman animated series and then also the Justice Unlimited series. So uh, if you hit three times in a turn or critical hit, that you you can bring in the troublemakers. Yep. Yes. And then if you miss three times in a turn or critically miss in a turn that character can bring in the trouble alerts and they basically they come in off your sideline your sideline's smaller now so only six slots but uh some of these are still really worth it obviously i think black vulcan is the one i played the most i think that's true for most people because when he came in he could deal penetrating damage just like flat out and then he also had uh poison and energy explosion so you could like drop him next to somebody and poison them and then maybe shoot somebody later um they have a mechanic where they take damage if you roll at the end of their turn, but really that's not the point. The point is getting an extra character that can act for basically free. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, Firestorm was another one with a double perplex, and yeah. he gets prob on dial. They're, they've got a whole slew of powers, and obviously there's ones that are way better than others, but yeah, if your team's gonna be making multiple attacks, definitely look at the troublemakers. If you have multiple flurries and you're going to definitely have like four to you know six attacks going off in a turn, you're likely going to miss or hit a few of those. So have a good selection of both. And since IDs aren't legal for silver right now, uh, these are really one of your better sideline options, I think. They are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, the sideline shrank, but I mean, zero points. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't argue with that. There's gonna be instances where you don't want to call them in and you don't have to. They are an yeah. optional call in. Yeah. So 
Yeah, Black Vulcan, probably the, the cream of the crop, and then like Brainiac and Grodd for your Those were also really, really good, yeah. Really, really solid. And the Troublemakers are also like only 10 points. Yeah, yeah they're, they're even right. worth the main force. Main them, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, another like archetype to look at is like the Danger Room constructs and like Don't Die tech. There's a lot of figures, such as like the Ha Ha Joker here. Who literally doesn't have a KO on his dial. He does some wacky stuff where he can click both ways and takes forever to kill. In a timed match, you're probably just not dealing with him. His traded super senses sidestep, so you equip him with, I mean, give him the exospecs, give him a sword, give yeah. him whatever, and he's just going to be a huge pass for your opponent to deal with. On top of that, the danger room constructs, they've only taken a max of uh, one damage at a time. Things like exospecs on Magneto, too. Now he's pulse waving. Yeah. Uh, with Force Blast, where he chooses the direction of the knockback. So, yeah. full speed Force Blast, oh, and you can hit him into walls, knock him off of buildings. Uh, Mr. Sinister is a phasing out with piece that is just crazy annoying to deal with. Like, I don't, I've played against him, I don't know how many times. I don't think I've ever KO'd him. It's just so ridiculous. And so, don't die tech. You'll hear that a lot if you, you know, listen to anything Silver Age. It's a very real thing. There's a lot of stuff that is really tough to KO. And the danger rooms are usually a focal point of that. The Haha -ha Joker as well. And then possibly things you might see like oh, yeah, Hulk, Hulk. Uh, 100 points. Or the really Stair hard Devil. to take Stair down. Devil. Yeah. yeah. Another person with a crazy and mechanic. To a slightly smaller degree, the Shredders. This yeah. That's true, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hate rolling dice. Sometimes I miss my attacks when I roll dice. How do you solve that problem? Dealing damage by not rolling dice. That's what the Shredders do perfectly. Just by moving, they get a deal of penetrating damage. There's all sorts of wacky stuff. They're also really hard to KO for the most part. Like Mini and Clone have really weird effects that just make them not easy to KO right away. And they can just come all the way across the map without rolling any dice and then ding you penetrating damage. So if you were worried about these guys, maybe you don't have to be because Shredders just kill them all in one shot. So don't be putting your Colossals adjacent because boop, one thing goes there. Now they're both dead. <laughs> So and Shredders, another thing Shredders are really they strong. trigger multiple times a turn. Oh yeah, absolutely. So if they move yeah. by a sidestep, they move by a move action, or any other outside effect that gives them the ability to move, they can deal penetrating damage. So they could you run through your whole too. team. There's, yeah, you can run several of them. So just look into Shredders dealing, we call ping damage, when you deal like one penetrating damage to somebody. Check out stuff like that. Yeah, these Shredders, so there's Claw Shredder, Clone Shredder, Shark Shredder, Shiva Shredder, Shiba Mini. Mini Shredder, yeah. yeah, there's five of them. And then on top of that, you can combo that with the What If Super Rare Peacemaker, who makes it so it's a global effect where the most damage that you can take from a singular attack is three. So that is going to make the Shredders like, you know, you just can't one-shot them. So it's like, yeah. I have more time to deal that ping damage, and I can just move adjacent. I think the easiest one to reach for, I think it's worth the money to pick up. This guy's like... Eight bucks on eBay, maybe. Yeah, you'll be like the and cheapest shredder. I'm you don't necessarily sure. have to play him with all shredders. Maybe there's like a weird build you can do with him, but free damage is always good. He's Just a slow like, uh, play. An alpha strike build. Yeah. He can go on to. You know, if you want to play the that flash chainsaw team we talked about, or a bunch of maggots or something, you can go ahead and throw this guy on any alpha strike team, really. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and look over some key figures. We kind of talked about archetypes. We mentioned a few key figures during that section. Let's go ahead and talk about like specific figures you want to be aware of going into Silver Age. Yeah. Uh, so you want to talk about Groot? Groot from AI, yeah. he's So like the rest of the Retaliators, he does have a Retaliation line, and that's pretty much all you'll see him at. It's 20 points. He comes with Leadership. The biggest thing is you give your opponent a Leslie Evans token, and if you're able to give them a Leslie Evans token, you also get two Walking Woods tokens, which are Sidestep, Flurry, Shape Change, and I think Toughness. Yeah. Uh, and... They, they don't have a lot of speed, but they're zero points to you. And for 20 points, having two flurry pieces that are like 10 for three on your team. Uh, also, just having a leadership that goes for like cosmic or just in general, having a plus one action total, total for that is pretty great. And then on his retail, if he hits, he spawns another walking wood. So, yeah, it's, it's just an crazy endless value. nightmare. He's also not <laughs> unique. So, it's you a can lot. play like two if you really want. Like... I know I've killed so many Walking Woods in my day. Uh, it's insane. Like, he was quite literally, when he was modern, he was on almost every team for quite a while. It was. He also just gets plus one attack and, de or attack and defense if he's not on a Guardians yeah. team team. Yeah, so, so if you he's play him as he normally would. Yeah. yeah no, he's just, I almost mean, no one plays him on a Guardians theme. And if, well, if he is on a Guardians theme, I think it's like protected, protected out with. Yeah. yeah. So, um, 
a little trade off, but it's really better to just not play him on that. He's a consideration for like every team. Like leadership is mm-hmm. something you always build, with yeah. no matter what. Free bystanders that kind of do like they do a lot of damage. <laughs> they do. And then yeah, like a retail. So it's like, hey, deal with this. Otherwise, he might be a problem there. Like it's so much offense, so much utility. Uh, you can't go wrong with Groot, even by today's standard. He's uh, an incredible piece. He is. Oh, Unimind. Uh, <laughs> I don't advise you play this figure because everyone, you know, might have some choice words for you. <laughs> you need to be aware of what it does, though. Yeah. You should definitely look at Unimind's dial. Check out all the things that it can do. It's got pick a power. It's got all these stop clicks. It has insane perplex to buff its values by plus like six or something dumb, plus four, plus whatever. That doesn't matter. Point values, this, yeah, yeah, it depends on the point value. You might see Unimind run at 275. You might see it run at 175. It adds all these things to its sideline that it can choose powers from, all these other Eternals. And then even once you kill Unimind, you don't score any of its points, no matter how hard it was to KO. You then get points and it will for be. each. It's going to be really tough. Trust me. There's yeah. healing. There's stop clicks. There's crazy high values. There's He's rollouts. He's powers. If yeah. you target with him with an attack, he gets to pick a new power from his side. The line. power that he picks is protected pulse wave. Yup. <laughs> so even once you kill him, then just the Eternals are popped out. And don't let a Unimind player stall on this. A lot of them will, but they have to place all their Eternals within four squares of where Unimind died. And a lot of them will hum and haw about where to place them. Try to help them speed up the process, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you don't score any points from killing Unimind. You then have to kill all four of those Eternals. Yeah. They are only on their last click, but if time is starting to run out, you better make sure to make those attacks really, really and fast. All of those Eternals can also drop like Power Cosmic, get a plus two yeah. to defense. Um, so yeah, it's no easy task to take down a Unimind, and then it's even harder to like slog through like what's like 275 is his like mid range, right? Or like two eighty five. So you slog through all of that, and then you also have to hunt down these other figures for yeah. points. And I think a lot of them have ways to get away, or at least a lot of them have stats. phasing, phasing the teleport. Yeah. yeah. So so be aware of that. Play yeah. really f- as fast as you can, really against Unimind, because time is of be the aggressive. Essence. Because yeah, typically a Unimind build is going to be like I'm going to KO something that's like twenty points, and then I'm going to say come deal with me. Mm-hmm. So if you don't do that, you're not going to have the time to score points. And so they, you know, could get an easy advantage. He also has 10 range with dual targets. Yeah. So he's got by good today's reach. standard. And so, like, you know, if you're playing him at his lower line, <clears throat> then you have some eternal sidelined. He's got two plus two perplexes, a 10 range. He's picking powers. I mean, the guy's a menace. He's been a menace. And in the ID card era, oh, my gosh, let's not even go there. <laughs> so don't advise playing him, but people will play him. Yeah. <laughs> Another one, one of my personal favorites. I'm super excited to bring him back. Windigo. This guy is uh, along the same lines as a Retaliator. He's one click, but he can heal past the starting line. If somebody's been damaged, he can make a free attack against them. He has Charge Flurry. He has Giant Reach. The guy can make like three to four attacks a turn if it's positioned right. So when you play them in multiples and your opponent can't deal with all of them in like one go, one Windigo pops off. For 15 points, this guy will get his value. Almost every single time, whether that was wasting your opponent's action, healing up and then, you know, not being able to be dealt with, or, you know, just even getting, like, one or two attacks off and just dealing, like, one damage. Like, he's 11 for 3 with Flurry Exploit. (laughs) For 15 points, I mean, there's very few, if there is any, in his point class for, like, just raw damage. Like, it is absolutely absurd. Yeah, being able to pump out potentially 12 damage. (laughs) <laughs> um, is unheard of for a 15-point figure outside of him. Almost one one damage for each point of his click. <laughs> yep. It's... Pair him with, like, Rare Kazar, too. Yeah. And oh, now wow. he's moving yeah. for free, so he can trigger a free attack with that. So, yeah. He can sidestep, free attack, costed, flurry. Oh. Disgusting. And then, oh, he charged flurry to move? Another free attack. Yeah. Five attacks with your buddy Kazar, and that is a 65-point combo. 100%, if you play Silver, you will see this guy... He's nasty, he's mean, he's not green, but man, (laughs) he'll be healing to his green line. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, might as well be. Speaking of the color green, though, fan favorite, Green Arrow. Uh, I actually never got to play this guy when he was modern. I picked him up after he rotated for Chief. Uh, You guys want to go over this guy? Yeah, sure. Why you might want to watch out for him. So he does have to hit, so your opponent does get a roll shape change and super senses. But he has ranged combat expert with a 12 for, 12 for 3. three. Yeah. So, yeah, he's a 13 yeah. for 4. 
and they cannot use defense powers when he hits. So that means no stop clicks, that means no impervious roll, that means no super, well, they, they do, do they get, get super, super sets, uh, but like none of the normal ones. Um, so nothing that like you don't get a roll out of. Uh, but yeah, mo the biggest thing is he can really just like tank through a large dial. Anyone that's got like a stop click, like Immortal Hulk, for instance, has that stop click right after his front click and Green Arrow just blasts right through that. Um, he has a restriction on... Genesis and on... too, with their, like... Oh, yeah. yeah. Multiple totally gets stop past clicks, stop clicks. Dial, yeah. or... It still gets revealed, but it doesn't get, like... You don't actually get a stop on it. So mm -hmm. if they're playing him at the lower point line, uh, Blackheart's another one where he just kills in one shot. Um, there's quite a few, like, decent, like, four-click to five-click long characters that have a stop click that they rely on, mm -hmm. and he just says no. Yeah. Another thing of note with him is he does have improved targeting, elevated, hindering, and characters. Mm -hmm. So he'll get a shot off. He's got eight range, so a single TK, he's practically shooting across the board. And then, uh, yeah, he's going to hurt you real bad. So super senses is a great, like, way to kind of... He also, like, what, can't be targeted him. when he's in clear terrain? I mean, he has, like, one yeah. action token or One action token, right? yeah. he's, like, in clear and if you're more than, I believe, and then he has four stealth, away. more than four away. He has like stealth, and then also Card be on he's screen. clear to Card will be on screen. You guys can read it. You can pause yeah. it. You can check it out. But he's, uh, I mean, in in my head, he's like one of the hallmark figures of Silver Age. Like when I sure. hear Silver Age, he's yeah. like one of the first people I'm thinking about. He was definitely a lot better when ID cards were a thing. He just called yeah, it for five a turn. points for that. You know, yeah, five kind of wild. One time. I don't know Ooh. how much main force you'll see, but you should just at least be aware of Green yeah. Arrow. That's just some cool tricks you can do with him. I do just want to bring up you throw the lasso on him, so now he can do yeah. a free eight range in cap. Ooh. If it hits, bye bye to your defense power. So if you do have super senses, no, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Or energy explosion with him. He can do some deadly mm -hmm. stuff. Some Mandarin rings on him are kind of fun. Uh, next step, we already kind of talked about Haha. We Joker. did a little bit. Yeah, it's kind I of mean, guys, for 30 to 50 points, seriously, just, just look at his dial. I mean, he's not dying. He's he's just I I don't, there's just no words for him. This guy is so absurd. Oh, he can't be masterminded too. Okay, I'm just gonna put him next to you. Now you have, have to fun. deal with him. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Especially there's so many you, things you can equip to him that are good. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's ultimate nullifier. There's so many swords. There's like things that make him a viable maker for some poison. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's just like so much stuff where it's just you don't want him to be alive, but it takes so much effort to make him no longer be on the you board. You have to invest like a minimum of like four to five actions to kill this guy, yeah. just, and you're scoring like thirty to fifty points, yeah. maybe it's pretty pretty low amount of points for a high amount of effort. Like, what is your opponent out. doing to you in that time period where Ha Ha Joker's running around? This is another figure where he's reasonably inexpensive. I think you can pick one up for like fifteen dollars on eBay. Yeah, I'd definitely check him out. I would definitely pick him up if you have plans to play for silver because. I mean, even if you're not playing Don't Die, this is just a great piece to just park next to your opponent and say, like, deal with them. Top dial out wit to go with it, too. Like, he's got some utility. He's got the trade and senses uh, side stuff. It's, he's crazy. He's another hallmark Silver Age figure, in my opinion. Uh, also, Ooh, along with yeah. Joker style. Biz figures. Bizarro Green Arrow <laughs> is also really wild. So, he lets you just mastermind to him for ranged attacks, but it's better than that. He becomes the hit target of a ranged attack. So you can plop anybody you want next to Bizarro Green Arrow. Save a retail. Yeah, you can save a retail. You can save, save whoever. whoever. <laughs> you're like, oh, but that means he's still getting hit. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. He's got stop clicks. He's got like easy ways to just kind of come back reverse to life. He's got RCE. Yeah, reverse. You can drop RCE your damage by two. two. Yeah. Your attack by, by two. two. Yeah. Or one and one. Yeah. So. Damaging this guy, you're not. You just With no perplex to damage anymore. Too like it's, dropping it's damage from really range perfect. attack. Like it's crazy. There's so much strong close combat offense and hero clicks at the at the moment in modern and in silver. But then you have these incredible range pieces like Green Arrow, and then you have things like Bizarro Green Arrow, where it's just like once again, am I even considering using range? Because like running into that, if you have a range based team, you're just gonna, you're gonna have a bad huge time. Huge counter. Unless you have a way to knock range. him away, like. Yeah. yeah, Bizarre Green yeah. Arrow is real scary. I think Energy Explosion, Mind Control, there's like only a few things that really... Kind of get around it. Get around yeah. it, but what the biggest thing is, happens to be uh, illegal for Silver Age, uh, banned, and that's the Hawkeye. Oh yeah, oh, no longer an issue. You could just keep like... But yeah, he was a problem. Yeah. Mr. Oz. Mr. Ooh, Oz. Fun. Oh, oh yeah. 
Uh, so you'll have to remind me a little bit, but Mr. Oz has a 12 range prob that sees through basically everything. And I've got all these small maps now. Literally everything. You basically, you move in four squares, yeah. that's the entire mm -hmm. map that he has prob to, and he yeah. ignores it. All terrain for line of fire. On, on small maps, he's crazy. Uh, there was a change to TK where TK became four squares instead of six. That makes Mr. Oz even more crazy because after a character's been TK'd, doesn't matter if it's line of fire, range, anything, just anywhere on the map, if they've been TK'd, he may then place them two squares away from where they were placed. So that can help your own TK go further. It also makes your posing TKs just like a worse version of Scythe. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can move their characters to a place they definitely didn't want to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he's also got the Hyper Time team ability, mm -hmm. which not amazing, but it is like something that helps him keep it's alive for a little bit longer. Yeah, and keeps then, him getting pulled up on. Yeah, it would go a, adjacent, you roll a d6. He's got super senses. So, I mean, really, he's not going to leave your starting area on the right maps. Doesn't mm -hmm. really have to. Maybe he'll go a little bit up. But uh, it's mostly that super crazy prob and then that super crazy TK power that you're dealing with. And uh, I know personally, when I would do alpha strikes to get like across the team or get across the map, I loved having him on the team yeah. because it was eight at the time. And now on a smaller map, making it six, making my opponents two. That you're basically seems... saying like buy to your TK. And yeah, yeah don't even use this as a power that is quite literally on every team. Your opponent's it's probably not gonna power crazy. action TK. They might still do a free action, but like, yeah, it, it'll throw off a lot of teams, especially when you're the attack. one placing afterwards. It's like you know if they if you have like a map with like tight corners, right? They TK here. It's like oh, I'll place you behind that wall now. Yeah, yeah. like that's there's a lot of fire. There's yeah. so much that you can do with this guy. Sure, he dies in two clicks, but the utility this guy offers, I mean, you, you can't find it anywhere else. No, yeah. not really. Claire Finn is another huge support piece in this thing. Uh, the biggest thing that she does is she makes a Lieutenant Yaffet bystander, which gives all adjacent uh, friendly characters just sidestep. If you know anything about the game, sidestep's huge. Free move two squares. Positioning is massive in this game. That can add so much reach to an Alpha Strike team. That can give you all these great little ways to strategically move around. Sidestep is just massive. Just playing around with the idea of giving your entire team sidestep is huge. Claire Finn herself also has support, and then she has support as free and under With the old... minus two attack. <laughs> minus yeah. two attacks on the old rules where you had to make an attack roll. It was like, oh, it's a little risky, but now that it's just a power action to roll dice, it's just free support. It's insane. So she can support twice. She's 25 points, and for what she is doing, it's massive. She herself has sidestep anyways, because why not? So... Her plus Lieutenant Yaffet are really big, and they've even played this on sideboards for Jason Wingard sometimes yeah. to get you Lieutenant Yaffet. He also has poison. He also, yeah, he also has poison, and shape change, the, super yeah, senses, super senses, super senses, yeah. Yeah. RIP Jason. Two, two yeah. rollouts, a sidestep, and poison, yeah. If there, was, if there was one thing to take away from this video, I killed that Chewie with Yaffet once. Did you? That's <laughs> hilarious. So yeah, like Yaffet's really good. You can get him up there, poison, sidestep your whole team. He's a great tech piece, him and... Uh, What's his name? Dr. Claire Finn. <laughs> they're just a great little combo that come together. So for only things, 25 so. points and their scientist keywords, they go on some pretty popular teams. So they're really solid. Yeah. Support also, you can be adjacent to opposing characters oh, yeah. now when you use it. So yeah. oh, gosh, she doesn't have to stay. Yeah. You used to have to like keep them back because you'd have to get a like break away, get away from your opponents to heal. Now you can just stay right up in the fray. And like if they kill her, they do. If they don't, then like they're going to have to at some point, otherwise yeah. she's just healing people every turn. I mean, you think about how often like green lantern team ability and like flash, for example, is used. So you're carrying up like your whole team with the green lantern TA. If you have Yafit side by like to any of these guys, yeah, now like especially for your green lantern characters, sidestep with the green lantern TA is absurd. Yep. You're constantly repositioning up to eight or nine people. Yeah. So that's another thing to think about. Like what this guy can enable by you handing out sidestep is it's just so much. He's awesome. I think another element like that, honestly, like I just do not like this one. The pocket tank. Yeah. I'm not the guy to talk about this. Like I got pocket tank so much. Pocket that was tank. awful. <laughs> yeah. Dropping the tank on people <laughs> is so a lot of these things that we've talked about, they've had erratas over time. Uh the pocket tank is definitely one that got changed, but essentially it is a what is the I don't it's know eight point eight, eight point eight point bystander, eight point bystander. when you make minus a, one damage yeah you make a minus one damage attack uh, range close doesn't really matter uh, but if you attack instead of dealing normal damage you 
then turn the pocket tank into the, what is it, three by, or uh, two, two, by, two, by, two by six. Two by six. six. Yeah. You turn it into the full sized tank that just displaces oh, it's a two by four. everyone that it was placed. Oh, two by it's a two four. by four, two by yeah. six would be insane. Two it's a two by four. four. Yeah, yeah. Two I, by four. I was thinking two by three. I was like, that's not right. I don't three know why. Thinking, I said you were thinking two by three six. by six for Galactus, but go yeah, ahead. Uh, it displaces <laughs> entire teams. So if your team, if your opponent's team is all bunched up, they're all together, like they want to do a Green Lantern carry next yeah. turn, and you drop the tank, it can just completely shatter. It doesn't deal positioning everything. It deals two damage. It does it deals two, two damage to everyone damage. that it's like it was placed on. But you can also just use it to like move one character really far away. You can yeah. use it to kill certain like colossals and stuff. This guy loved the pocket tank back in the day. I I'll loved using what. it with uh so you can't do this anymore because you can't replace a oh, yeah. wood would take normal damage with another would take normal damage, but oh. I used to love doing the Professor X from Xavier School. Ah. <laughs> mind control. Through walls. Through walls. <laughs> so he was like, let me control your mind. Just kidding, it's a tank. And like that was a big thing. But even though you can't do that I'm having now, visions of heavy artillery. <laughs> any character that can carry a tiny character, any character that has a good range attack, yeah. Um, any character that doesn't deal a lot of damage but has like improved targeting, there's so many options for getting the tank out there, and it's just so disruptive. Uh, they do score points if they destroy the big tank, but like man, I think it's worth it most of the time. So yeah. I know I played it in 2018, and you can get the jump on somebody. Have, no, I didn't play it in 2019 because I didn't play in uh, singles, but I played it in 2018, and yeah, it just always pull its weight for eight points. For eight points, if you have a solid range attacker, it's a great consideration. It follows whoever's moving right along. You only get one shot with it, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can make it happen. If you build around it, it's it's really good. It was on, I mean, just about every meta team for like its entirety of modern, I'd yeah. say. Like probably close to 75, 80% of teams. I don't think that's going to change. You'll still see it. Uh, another thing to talk about, actually we'll save this for last because it's kind of a sad point. Yeah. Uh, Star Trek Q Prime, probably the mm -hmm. only Star Trek figure worth talking about, at least for the sake of this. Yeah. Q Prime, uh, he's got dice replacement. Dice replacement may very well be the strongest ability effect in Hero Clicks, like period. Like being able to yeah. say, like, probability control's done, this is what we're going with. So he gets a singular die on his card. He also has, like, what, two ways to roll out? He also has super, so senses. He has super senses and shape change. Yeah. And then he also has just regular prob on dial. And then Doesn't yeah, he have a thing where like his uh his role his role can be used for super senses. So yeah. you can use it like uh, if it's a one, you can use it for an opposing super sense. Or if it's a six, he just has a locked in auto succeed. Yeah. Also mm -hmm. the Q the Q team ability, which was on like five characters, is power <laughs> cosmic, cosmic energy. So you cannot win him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a menace. He's really strong. He dies to just a singular poison, so that's something to yeah, consider. He's just one click for 30. He will uh, he will be making appearances. He was a really spendy piece, so, I mean... Was. $300 I'm not sure how often time. you'll see him. He does take the prime slot, too, but that is definitely a figure where... Read about him a little bit, because you probably will see him at some point if you do end up playing silver. The last thing is Ooh, map bonuses. Maps! Though. I'm sure that was short lived. I don't know. Are we still doing that? No, nope. no, we certainly are not. One. Not since Cosmic Clash. Or there's another Fantastic one. Four. Yeah. So there's the Reign of Terror one, which gives you a plus one to your leadership roll mm -hmm. if you win the map, and the Constellation is an automatic succeed on your leadership. Whenever you want. So, so that's how you use right away. Blackheart bringing in a guard whenever he wants is fantastic, or just having a four through six leadership for his guards. It's great. Two by two Exodus. So many Lock examples. Lock in at like plus three stats. Yeah. Like there's uh, Yeah. Also so many things stuff. that trigger off of uh, leadership. A lot of them are like Iron Spider Prime something. now, who shuts Ooh. off equipment on a successful yeah. leadership. Yeah, just really like good. that. And then my favorite map bonus that was ever made is the Iron Man's Workshop from Earth X. Not only is it just like a really good map, but you're winning the map. You get a power action to potentially make like these little bystanders for Iron Man's. You don't care about that. You don't. You don't really. It doesn't matter so much. You want to lose map. That's the whole point of this constellation. You want the constellation. It lets you choose. No yeah, so you're playing this bad boy with no theme. You're like, why, Calder? Why would I want to lose map? Because you get the cheapest probability control in the entire game. Uh, if you lose map, you get to choose just one of the bystanders to have on your team as a consolation. And that gets you the Crimson Sage, which is the robot version of Scarlet Witch. And she has prob, force blast, and ESD as a little five-point map bonus. You now have a probability control, which is super useful and really dumb for just five points.
And so also, your opponents don't score it, even though it's technically they don't. five points. Yeah, they just they get that. Wipe your whole team. They don't get that map bonus. So yeah. it is a little bit um, point denial. Kind of goes cool. with uh, like don't die, but also sometimes it's just stuff like Unimine, where Unimine's kind of don't die, but also he's just like long time like point denial. Oh you know, yeah, you know you kind of just like kill some stuff and then wait out the clock in a sense. But uh, yeah, map bonuses also go into that. If there is another map that's bonus you mentioned, and that's Wakanda or oh Wakanda. Wakanda. Yeah, that's not a map <laughs> bonus. That is just merely the effect the map yeah, has. That's on. just the map just has. You don't pay for that. That's yeah. just the maps. That was exactly. before map bonuses. So if you're really? in the yeah. on Wakanda, I played it which, one time with the cosmic. Black it came Black. out in AEW. Yep. So um, that was one of the Avengers Defenders War maps, and <laughs> in the hindering on that okay, map well, was a. Plus two get that map then. against range, so you get a plus two your defense instead of the normal plus one for being in hindering. And there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of hindering terrain on this map. It's like seventy it's percent. Of the map. It is, <laughs> yeah, so majority much. of the map. So definitely that one. We could probably spend all day talking about maps. Things like hedge maze, you might need Star Trek Underground, you might need. Ugh. There's tons of maps. What's that awful range. one called? The just blocking doors, and windows. Oh, the oh, is, the, is that not the, the uh, one? The, the capture ancient hold. Ancient hold. Yeah. Ancient hold is an ROC state map of my existence. Uh, if you want a map that has them. nothing on it, look at the WWE map, WWE yeah. Arena indoor. That is just hindering terrain. That's the only thing Probably on that Batman's map. Old stomping uh, grounds. Pour one out for Batman. Yeah. Man. So if you want a map with nothing on it, there's that. If you want a map with a ton of stuff on it, there's ancient hold. It's just terrible, and I hate it. So <laughs> I don't think it's worth really getting too much into but like the iceberg lounge was really big at one point. Oh, that is also oh, true yeah, yeah. now because that equipment is auto like uh, it's not it's they were still good for tying up your opponent's something. team though that's true iceberg also, lounge you got to make forcing them to uh, attack a penguin something. like bystander like a few other like yeah. seals or something right seals or penguins seals, yeah. and you could just walk those right up to your opponent's force like turn one mm -hmm. and now they were just adjacent to these things that i don't know if they, they have plasticity or not man Stealing one Steal of objects, objects. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So something. Iceberg Lounge That's is another good. map bonus I also just love to that look map. at. It is a fun map. map. It's a really, it has very interesting terrain for placement, so it's actually just also a very strong map. But guys, that is Silver Age. Let us know if you found all these tips helpful. If you looked at these figures and were like, oh wow, that really hurts or helps my Silver Age team, I'll add that. Also, if you play Silver Age normally and you think we missed anybody, we were just trying to Probably highlight... Good. We're just trying to highlight some of the biggest <laughs> ones in Silver Age. But if you think we yeah. missed something, go ahead and let people know in the comments section below and talk about what you think people that are trying to get into Silver Age need to look out for before they play in their first Silver Age tournament. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification button to know every time we release a video on Dial H for Heroclix. And like always, happy trails.